to uh, lead and worship and, and live and lead the way as we do. And sometimes those things are happening in the world, those things can seem distant to us, or they can seem something that maybe we're not connected to. But I think, uh, again, for me, COVID has taught me one thing, it's that nothing is as, is as far away from what we, as what we think it is. So I know that we're going to pray um, a little bit after the service um, for Ukraine and for Russia, and I think that's a super important thing that we do that. But as I say, for me, just really, um, was a time to reflect on our, our freedom and the rights that we have and the privileges that we have um, and how not to take that for granted. And um, sometimes it can be a bit of a spot on the church. We can be, and we can all be honest about that, I hope. But again, it just reminded me that I should not take that for granted. That is something that I am honoured and privileged to be able to do. And we're here to serve each other and to, um, to bless and worship Jesus. Yeah. And the scripture that really sat with me as well. Uh, this week was just a one that we're so familiar with from John 16 um, and it's probably yeah, it's maybe popped into our lives at some point over the past uh, couple of years in particular it says I have told you these things so that in me you may have perfect peace mm. the world yeah. does not know that peace they can't know that peace we see that yeah. out there and actually if you allow yourself to be drawn into that you can be quite terrified yeah. you could but God gives us perfect peace. How incredible yeah. is that? Amen. And it's not that He just gives it to us and walks away. He says in me, abide in me, have that perfect peace. Don't feel like that today. I just encourage you to join with your with your friends with each other, and we will come into that place of perfect, perfect peace together as well. Sometimes we don't feel able to get on that on our own, and that's what fellowship is also about. Yeah. Um, and it goes on to say. In the world of tribulation, distress, suffering. And again, how much more can we have done that in the past few years? Um, and then it goes on to say a word we've been uh, looking at as well in the, in the music team. It says, but be courageous, mm, yeah. be confident, be undaunted, and be filled with joy. Yeah. Don't just kind of knuckle down and hope for the best, be filled with joy. Yeah. And actually, and when I was thinking about that joy, what does it bring to shift from? place of fear into joy the polar opposites and God calls us into that joy, he calls us to have that and he says have joy because I have overcome the world my conquest is accomplished and my victory is abiding and that is really resting, resting that peace, resting that conquest, resting victory because that is what he has given to us, that is the privilege that we have um, as, as Christians and as believers and again I encourage you if that's not the place you feel like today Step into that, let's step into that together, let's worship yeah. together, um, let's spend some time in the presence of God because it's so important that we do that and that we do yeah. find together as well. So I'd be blessed, we look forward to continuing to worship together, and um, yeah, and I'll hand over to the music team and join them. Can we stand and get ready to worship the King of Kings this morning and the Lord of Lords, for He is great. Mercy endureth forever. How many of you know that when you come into the presence of the Lord, you find joy in His waters? Oh, let's worship.
over my soul. I'm free, I'm cleansed, I am made whole. I've been made new. There's joy, there's joy in the water. There's a river rushing over my soul. I'm free, I'm cleansed, I am made whole. I've been made new. Let joy rise, let joy rise, let joy rise, let joy rise. I've been made new. Let joy, let joy rise, let joy rise, let joy rise. In your waters, let your river rush in over my soul. I'm free, I'm cleansed, I'm made whole. I've been made new. There's joy in your waters, let your river rush in over my soul. I'm free, I'm cleansed, I'm made whole. I've been made new.
the glory of the Lord. Here comes the glory of the Lord, sweeping in the room. Here he comes, here comes the glory. Here comes the glory of the Lord. Church, can you feel the glory?
Disconnected 
and under the earth, and on the sea, and in all that is in them, singing to him who sits on the throne, and to the Lamb. Be praise and honor and glory and power forever and forever and ever 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 to get excited in church. Just tell your neighbor it's okay to get excited in church. It's okay to shout in church. It's okay to lift your voice. It's okay to lift your hands. It's okay to shout. It's okay to bless him. Wow, where do you go from there? I'm just saying if the band leave me, I will sing. <laughs> well, it's great to see you this morning. Welcome, welcome. It's great to see you. Kenny. It's great to see you. <laughs> How are you doing, mate? It's great to see you. Kenny's not been here in a little while. He's been on well, but we've been praying for him and we sent him a prayer cloth home and stuff. Really great to see you this morning, mate. Really great to see you. Um, okay, we got a few of them. I'm looking around. Is Mina and Ezekiel here? Oh, you are. <laughs> Are you on your own? Okay, just come on out here. My voice is not going to make it, I don't think. Um, have a hold of Mike there. And um, Mina and her husband, uh, Ezekiel, and little boy have been with us for several months now. And uh, originally come across from India. And um, we were hoping they were going to stay with us, but his work is now taking him to Carlisle. And so this is their last Sunday with us uh, today. So we've been standing back and forth in contact, and we said, we just want you want to know, even though we've been with us a short period of time, they've just come in and become part of our family very quickly. And um, so we want to take a time just to pray. Um, we've got them in contact. Uh, we've contacted the Elam Church up there, and uh, Pastor Alan up there. I've known Pastor Alan for a long, long time. Great church in Carlisle. And so the last few weeks, they've been up, managed to get a flat and all sorts of things, and been into the church and met the pastor. And so give us a little bit of an update, and then we want to take some time just to pray. So talk in, yeah, talk into it, they'll sort it at the back.
We went house hunting for two weeks. It was very difficult because all the houses in the market, you know, were filled up till April, May because of the tenancy was it over. So we couldn't find a house. And then we were going back and forth and we just prayed and then we even told pastor. You know, it's so difficult. We just settled in and then we have to move. And then pastor said, pastor prayed with us. And then I even spoke to Rachel and then the pastor and Rachel were saying, don't worry, God has a house for you there. And we found an apartment. And you know, having a baby, it's so stressful. <laughs> Doing everything by myself. No, away from home. So this morning, Ezekiel had to go to work. My mother-in-law has come, so she's with the baby. I came to church, just exhausted. Sorry. Just. I just thank all of you, and hopefully we'll continue to keep in touch. Thank you. It's all right. It's all right. But you can come and stand in the place. Rachel, you just pray for this person. Come on, church. Let's just stand for a moment. We just want to bless them. You know, even though they've just been here for a short period of time, and it doesn't matter where you move around in the world when you win the church, it's all family. That's right. Isn't it? You know, we're going to take some time after our service this morning to pray for what's going on in Russia and Ukraine. And uh, you've seen lots of stuff on the media like you and I have. And we have family members in Russia and Ukraine. And we want to take time to pray over them a little bit later on. Um, but we just want to pray blessing over this precious family. Uh, they've come in, just become part of us for the last lot of months. Uh, and I know they've been very generous even when we came to Christmas and we did hampers and things like that. They were very generous in their giving along that. And like she said, she just felt part of being at home here and uh, as much as we love to keep them mm -hmm. uh, you've got to go when work takes you um, but they're just moving on to a different part of family up in Carlisle and I know Pastor Alan up there will look after them take care of them they've got an amazing church right up there and uh, so we just want to pray blessing so just raise your hands in this direction please yeah, sure. yeah Father I thank you for hearts that have been joined here Father even in this short time Father that and Mina and Ezekiel and the little one have been with us, Father. We've just felt such, yeah, such a joining of hearts here. And Father, we know that you bring that. It's you, Father. Wherever we go, when we're in your house and with your people, that, Father, you join hearts. Yeah. Father, we thank you for the provision of a house and a home for them, Father. Yes. We thank you, Father, even in advance, Father, for a church family, Lord, that they're going to become a part of, Father. Yes. And, Lord, we just want to speak and... Speak a blessing over that in Jesus' name. And Mina, we're releasing you with a blessing over you and your household. That as you go forth, and, um, there will be blessing on you. And there will be a blessing in this new place. Yeah, Father, I pray that you would just strengthen her as she prepares to leave. And as they prepare to leave, all the practical stuff that needs to be done, Father. May she just... Lean, may you just lean into him and draw strength to us from him. So, Father, we commit this precious family to you. Yeah, you've released with a blessing. Yes. Blessing yes. in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, give her a round of applause. The opportunity just to say, um, Goodbye to her, then please take the opportunity at the end. Uh, please be seated. Jen, come on. I felt so heavy with everything, I felt so low, I felt guilty. 
party because it was Rachel who prayed with me on the way out, gave me a hug in the car park. He's like, I don't feel any better. We were almost laughing. This, this has never happened before. I'm leaving Rachel. And, and, yeah, I didn't feel any better. So she's going to give me a lift back home before going on elsewhere. She's like, no, actually, you go. I'm going to walk back. So it's less than a mile to my house. So I set off walking. And it's like, no, I need to meet my guard. And I said to Rachel, I need to talk to guard. I can't just go home. I need to meet my guard. So instead of walking home, I walked for a minute and just walk in and tears down my face and you know, the usual. <laughs> but, um, so I, I walked and I'm telling God how I feel in no uncertain terms. Um, I mean, thankfully, it was, it was a rainy day, it's half term, it's a rainy day and it's cold, so I got my hat and uh, glasses on, scarf over my face so that hopefully nobody recognised me. Um, even at half ten, there's nobody around, so that was very much the grace of God. So I'm walking around, and I'm, I'm telling God, is that I felt, I felt rejected, I didn't feel valued, I felt redundant, uh, just so broken. There's so many things just going on. It's like uh, I've just walked and was, you know, telling God all about it. Um, I was just walking around by the lake. It was like where I just stopped. It was that just agony of emotional pain such that I'd never felt before. I mean, some of you know, we've been through some difficult times over the years, but I'd never felt actually so low. It was that just sheer pain, like a, a physical pain, that I felt it was crushing me. It was that I couldn't put it down, I couldn't shake it off, but I couldn't deal with it either. And it was that I was stood by the lake feeling like, I suddenly in that moment, it just felt like a pressure cooker with the lid on, with just nowhere for that pressure to go. I felt like I was going to explode, or just, I, actually, I felt like I, I felt like I was going to die. My heart was racing. I felt like, actually, in a minute, my heart's going to stop. I actually felt that I could die, and I didn't know what to do about it. <coughs> and it was that. I'm crying out to God as to, <laughs> you said you're close to the broken heart. Where are you? I, don't, I can't feel you. You need to come closer. And it was that I just felt absolutely overwhelmed with that pain that I couldn't deal with. And that moment is that I suddenly understood were well, you desperate for that release as to I can understand why people would self-harm, particularly with cutting. It's like I've never understood it before. I've sympathised. I know a few youngsters have, have gone through it and struggled with it. And I think, oh, my heart breaks for them, but I've never understood it before. And in that moment, it's like, I get it. I absolutely get it. I'm stood there. It's like you feel like I, the, it feel, felt like there was no way out, but to, to cut or to take to do something. I'm stood there thinking, God, this can't be. And it's that God. I felt on my own. Where are you? I've got, I feel like there's nobody I can talk to. There's nobody understands the pain that I'm feeling, and I can't deal with it. Just in that moment, I felt somebody just. Stood behind me, just by my shoulder. I didn't turn around. I suddenly saw Jesus in the Garden of Gethsemane. He's on his knees and he's weeping and praying and he's calling out to his father. And he's saying, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow, yeah. even to the point of death. Yeah. And it's that. You get it. I mean, stuff's a whole lot bigger than mine. But in that moment, it felt like my stuff was crushing me. And it's that, wow, suddenly, yeah, it's that. But then I'm thinking, you left him alone, why? You know, he's crying out, and he's feeling that, like, like I'm feeling, and then you left him. And again, it's that suddenly, God sent an angel, and it talks about in his anguish, God sent an angel to minister to him, to strengthen him. And it was that, I suddenly felt, this was Jesus just stood behind my right shoulder. And it's that, I'm not on my own. He understands, he gets it. Suddenly just the, the whole weight of everything just sort of fell off. Yes. And it's that, I'm all right. Amen. It's, I'm not finished. <laughs> there, is, there is so much more, I'm sorry. There is so much more. I'm stood there thinking, feel fine now. I suddenly realised how far I'd walked. It's like, try to walk it back. <laughs> so I start watching off walking back and I'm absolutely shaken to the core that thinking, I've got Jesus in my life. I've got Jesus that understands. I've got a God that I can call out to. He can change the circumstances that, when he's ready or not. 
and I'm all right. Amen. There are people that don't have that. Yeah. And I'm walking back, it's about three miles home, all the way home. I'm praying for so the number of youngsters I'm aware of have been cutting or in all sorts. Um, as I'm walking back, there's one friend in particular. So she struggled with anxiety and depression for a long time. And she's told me about stuff afterwards. She's got all the scars on her arms. And so, um, she had trouble with alcohol. Um, she's the loveliest friend, the kindest person. She's so, I'm trying not to say her name because we're on camera. I want to protect her dignity. So forgive me if I slip. Um, also, all the way home, she's so on my heart. And I'm praying for her. It's like, oh God, I know she's got, you know, she must have felt how I felt every time that she's done this. So I'm walking back and my heart's breaking for her. And I'm, again, I've got my scarf tight out of my face and I'm shouting to God as I'm walking back, thinking, well, there's nobody around, but I don't really care anymore. It's that like, I was shouting to God, as to God, would you tell her? I could like see her um, in that agony. I could see she's going to do something. It's like, oh, the next time this comes round, God, I was shouting, tell her, Jane understands. It's like, tell her, Jane understands. Tell her, if you, just tell her to come to Jane. Tell her, Jane understands. So all the way home, I say, I'm praying for her, and I'm praying for the stuff that's going on in our life and all that. I'm walking back, so I get home. I don't English, so I have a cup of tea. <laughs> Thinking, wow, this, you know, what's going on? I spent the afternoon just, I put a worship song on, sat down with a cup of tea and a worship song. was like, oh, it's beautiful. Presence of God in the kitchen thinking, oh, you know, then you think, how did I get so low? This just seems ridiculous. Then um, something just popped up on YouTube, which was at Stephen 30, I think it was, talking about there can be purpose in your pain. So it's one of, Rachel knows one of my prayers is to go on, then let's see some purpose in this because it really hurt. <laughs> <laughs> It was, and I, was, I spent quite a while, I was reading the word, God really spoke to me, beautiful, beautiful stuff. And I'm, I'm going to share with all with Rachel because it's, she'll let you get it, I'll take the answer. Anyway, so fast forward several hours, eight o'clock that evening, um, I was putting the clean washing away, so, you know, really spiritual. Got upstairs, <laughs> the doorbell goes. Andrew opens the door, just kind of coming around the landing, wasn't expecting anybody. I hear a voice, is your mum in? It was a friend that I'd been praying for. Oh. So I'm thinking, I wasn't expecting her. I, I ran down the stairs. Uh, she's got a crazy dog. She's standing about this height, furry, fluffy, wild, friendly, thankfully. The dog rushes in, no collar, no lead. I, I'm just part way down the stairs. So it's up the stairs, down the stairs, or you know, in the kitchen round. Oh. So it's like, oh, come in, come in. So I'm thinking, oh, she must have been out walking the dog. She only lives a few streets away. Must have been out walking the dog and just thought, oh, she knows I've been ill with post COVID, all this rubbish. Um, she'd come to see me and see what I'm doing. So I think, oh, that's nice. So I come in, so I'm like, oh, come, come through, come through the kitchen. So it comes in, it's like, oh, I'll put the kettle on. And then she's stood in between me and the kettle, leaning against, and then it's like, are you okay? I suddenly realised that she's got a coat on that's rather bigger than her. Uh, boots are muddy, and looks like the dog's all muddy paws, and it's bouncing around the kitchen. Um, and she then put her hands over her face and she is shaking, she is absolutely shocked, uh, sobbing to the point she's sliding there. Daniel was asking what happened to the dishwasher. Look, this is what happened to the dishwasher. Can't even see him. Um, yeah, so she's all over the place. So just grab her and hold her. She's shaking, thinking, I have absolutely no idea what's going on. Um, I said, Lord, what do I do? What do I say? I'm just holding her tight. I've just been like, just love her. Hold her tight, tell her she's safe, tell her she's okay. So that's what I'm doing. A few minutes, it's okay. She calms down, she's like, right, should we sit down? The two of us are sliding down the dishwasher, the dog's bouncing. It's some, this, he's got his feet on my shoulders, licking my face, and around this side, licking my face, and I'm trying to hold her. So we, we sit down. So, what's going on? So, turns out, major anxiety, everything going on at home. She's upstairs in the bedroom. Too much. She can't cope. She drank a whole bottle of wine. She picked up a second bottle of wine and a bottle of antidepressant tablets. She's just about to take them and she says, the weirdest thing, a light suddenly went on in my head and says, go to James. Aww. Jane understands. <laughs> so she ran down the stairs, grabbed, it wasn't her coat, it was her son's. <laughs> 
wasn't her boots, it was a daughter in law. And if he said, if I'd stopped, I wouldn't have gone, I'd have carried on with it. I said, it was just, I didn't stop to think. She said, I heard this voice in my head, ran down the stairs, the dog had followed her, she hadn't even stopped to put a collar and lean on the dog, she didn't shut the door, because her son then was worried as to what just happened. She's run down the stairs and out, runs, up, runs around to mine. So she's arrived at mine, just about to harm myself. But the very words that I had been shouting as I was praying, it was like, God, tell her this, are the very words that she heard. I came to mind. So then I was asking her, uh, you know, can I pray for you? So I'm praying through a few bits with her. So it calms down, she's like, oh, I'm okay now. There's a few more bits after you, Rachel. <laughs> On the way out, she gives me a huge hug and says, Such a privilege, said to me. It's such a privilege to have you in my life. You have no idea how much I value you. I wouldn't be here now if it wasn't for you. You make such a difference in my life. And it's like, wow, what could God do in a day? <laughs> so I want to give glory to God, but I feel like somebody needs to hear when you get to the point um, of self-harming, you need to know, actually, this is very real, it's very relevant. Jesus is with you right then. He knows what it feels like to feel overwhelmed yeah. with sorrow, even to the point of death. It's that. Yeah. Let him in. Talk to him. Let him let him deal with you. Let him change the situation. So, if you're not at that point, come and talk to me. Yeah. I haven't got all the answers, but I do know the one that does, and I do get it. I totally understand that point of... yeah. It, I feel it's a lie from the enemy that tells you with the cutting, the alcohol, the, the tablets, it's a lie. It's a temporary fix that will last moments and you've got guilt on top of everything else. Right. That doesn't work. But there's one that's very powerful that does, that makes a, a huge difference in your life. So please, yeah, let it be. Thanks, Jane. Sometimes we just have to walk through some things. And uh, sometimes we don't fully understand why. Sometimes we'd like the answers before we have to walk through. And uh, sometimes that's, that's very, very difficult to, to do. So um, can you hold for a minute? You okay? Just have a seat. Um, okay, let me just go through a few announcements. Or maybe just, can you just share up the cheek for a second, see if it fits in, because I'm just watching time to see if it fits in. Okay, so we're gonna release our young people just at this particular time. I see you walking towards. Um, the reason why I feel a little bit hurried, I wanna finish a little bit earlier, but it's already 25 past 11, um, because I wanted just to finish a bit earlier and then spend some time praying about the situation in um, Russia and Ukraine. And even though we're not necessarily, we're not there, we have a responsibility to pray as a church, okay? Let me fire through these announcements quite quick. Uh, prayer meeting at 9.30 in the morning after the service, we'll take some time to pray for Ukraine. Uh, Wednesday night, we have our prayer meeting and Bible study. We continue going through the cross of Christ in the book of Galatians. Uh, Limitless 22, if you've not signed your young person up now, you're, um, then I think the date might have gone. No, tomorrow? Was, it, was Friday the cheaper date gone? Monday. Is it, is it Monday? Okay. So if you've not signed up, then will you please speak to one of the youth team to give your name and your finance. You can put that directly into the church bank account. Um, otherwise, if you come a little bit later on, you can still go. But that obviously will be slightly more expensive. It's, it's an early bird rate. Encourage you to do that. At 20th of March, Bible Heroes encouraging uh, your children and those that will be up there that morning to come dressed as a Bible hero, taking a morning. Hopefully, as I say, in the next couple of weeks, we'll have a look at what dates we're going to do for the Bible, for the Bible, for the Daniel fast. Okay, do that together. Okay, you've got your Bibles. Okay, or your phones. Um, we're going to quickly look at this. If you get thanks, Joe. Um, it's it's a series that, that um, I hadn't planned on doing at the start of the year. Um, it was just some things that God had spoke to me over the probably the last four or five weeks, and I think I mentioned it to you last week. And uh, I was thinking, when do I start this? When do I kind of do this? Because we looked at um, the two Corinthians six two, which is above my head, and we spent four or five weeks just going through that particular verse. And I'm thinking, God, what is it now? I had a few other things that I wanted to do before Easter. Um, and we're going to look at the seven signs in John and then finish Easter Sunday morning with that, the resurrection and the life 
And um, but God had some other ideas that will kind of hold. But God had some other ideas that He just wanted to um, uh, to work through. I believe us as a church that's going to help us in our journey uh, with God. And uh, so we start this new series, Step Up. It's probably going to last three or four weeks. <laughs> uh, that's what He says. Um, but God may have other plans. And um, so we'll see. What we do have in this house, in everything that we have, we need to understand how blessed we are as City Church. Yeah. 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 Come on, talk to me. Yeah. We are very blessed with musicians Amen. and singers. Amen. <laughs> and you can say that a little bit louder, Malachi. Okay. Um, musicians, singers, sound guys, projection, words, all sorts of stuff. We're very blessed with our children's work with our young people's work, the things that are going on. We're very blessed financially with the house. God has looked after us even all the way through COVID. We're very blessed to have you here this morning. Yes. You're very blessed to be part of what's going on. But we don't ever want to take what God's doing in this house for granted. Yes. But I do know there is more. Yes. There was a word that was going through my mind as we were worshiping this morning that, you know, um, it was just amazing to be in the presence of God, wasn't it? Just amazing. Again, different. God's so creative in, in worship and um, the shout, the praise, the glory. I exalt thee. And this one of my favorite songs in all the world. You know, and the whole thing of what is going on, I think, it's just incredible. But when we come into his presence, you can have as much as the presence of God that you want. It's, up in, it's, it's to do with your ability to receive. Your ability to receive. And then the word contentment went through my head and think, well, the Bible says we've got to be content of what we have on our finance and all sorts of stuff. But on the other side of that coin, I don't ever want to be content of where I am in my relationship with God. Because I want to go deeper. I want to go further. I don't want to be content in the presence of God that I've sensed before. I want a deeper sense of His presence. Talk to me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And once we sensed his glory and maybe touched the scratches or the edges of his glory, I want to see the Shekinah kind of glory. Yeah. I want a little bit more of what I've got now. In fact, I don't like to use the word greedy, but I want more of him than what I can even handle. Amen. You know, sometimes when you go out for a meal and you're, you're hungry, they say, listen, when you're, when you're hungry, never go shopping. Yes, never go to food shop yeah. when you're hungry because everything looks really good, even those microwave meals. Look really good when you're going shopping. <laughs> so you need to be a little bit cautious on that. And um, Caleb and I went out for breakfast on Sunday or Saturday morning, Saturday morning. And um, they, I didn't realise that I thought it was an all-day breakfast, uh, but they finished serving breakfast at 11:30. So we got there at 11:32. Oh. And he's just taken the menu of the breakfast menu off the table, and it says, "Can we still have breakfast?" The reason I'm saying because the breakfast was cheaper than the main meal that was going on. And I promised Caleb I was taking him out for breakfast, but there wasn't. So he says, no, I'm not doing it anymore. It was all through the app, you know, it's all contactless and stuff. And uh, so we had to settle for a large mixed grill. Aww. The things you've got to do as a parent, it's just, it's just ridiculous, isn't it? And, um, but again, when it comes on, when you read it on the menu, you're like, oh, I can eat double that. Yeah. And then suddenly the plate arrives, doesn't it? And you've got all this food on there, and part of me says, oh, I, I can handle this. But sometimes when you get to near the end, I'm not quite sure I can finish it. I want to be a little bit like that in the presence of God. A little bit that with his glory. I want more on my plate of his glory and presence that actually I can handle right now. I want a little bit more. I want to be in a place where, you know what, it gets to the place. And we've read it all before. A place where the presence of God is so much. I'm just lying down there, and then somebody else has got to take the service. Because the most important person in the room is him. So when I talk about stepping up, I'm talking about going further and deeper in the presence of God that you've never been before. I'm talking about getting out of the boat. I'm talking about doing something extraordinary with a super extraordinary God. To do something incredible that we've never done before. So we never want to take what God's doing in this house for granted. We are so grateful, we are privileged, we are honored, and we continue to thank Him for what He's doing, but there's always more. There's always more. The Word of God says, you know, the latter house will be greater than the former. What we had last Sunday, it can be greater this Sunday. What we've had this morning can be greater next Sunday. 
Don't come thinking, oh, we're going to sing for an hour, or we're going to do this. No, you come with an expectancy, ready for God to do something incredible, ready for you to, your arms sore because you've raised them so long within the service, your feet are sore because you can't dance anymore, your voice is gone because you can't shout anymore. You've got to come with an expectancy that God will do something incredible. I mean, the question I've got down in my notes is, why would we not? And I don't have an answer to that. Why, why would, and I speak for myself, why would I not want more of God? Why would I want not more of His presence that come out right? But why would I not want more of His glory? Why would City Church not want more of what He's doing already? And that's every single one of us in this. And so as I began to look at this, Step Up speaks of this, to increase or advance, to take action when there is a need or an opportunity for it, to be strong or to conquer. I like that. I like that. I, I, I want to increase and Advance. I want, I want to go deeper. I, I want to take action when there's a need for the opportunity. The opportunity this morning was to go deeper in His presence. The opportunity this morning was to go to a place that you've never been before. The opportunity was when we're singing about the glory of God that something in this house would happen that's never happened before. That's what I want. That's what I want us as a church and as individuals to step up into what God has for us. On a spiritual level, there's a, there's a really passage, a really good passage of scripture in John chapter 5, when Jesus is walking past a paralyzed man, he's been paralyzed for 38 years, and Jesus says to him, has a conversation, you know, is it okay, do you want to get well? Now, that's a really odd question to somebody who's been paralyzed for 38 years. And then he says to him, pick up your mat, to get up, pick up your mat and walk. At that particular time, the man had a choice. I wonder how many other people from the church had spoke these words to him. I wonder how many other people had passed by and prayed for him. I wonder how many people had actually passed by on the other side because we don't want to give because we're fed up with giving people money or around. When you and I walk down the street and you see people out with clipboards and stuff, do you do what I do and cross over the other side? When people are giving out leaflets, we're, we're exactly the same. And I wonder how many people walk past this person, but Jesus comes along and says, get up, pick up your mat and walk. You're asking somebody who's paralyzed and not walked for 38 years to stand up and pick up that mat that you've been lying on for 38 years and go for a walk. The man had an issue. At that point in time, he had a challenge that was before him. What do I do? But the words of Jesus are creative. Yes. The words of God have power. Yes. And at that point of time, the power that was released by the spoken word of Jesus, the, the ruach of God, the breath of God that's coming out, that the man grabbed a hold of those words, suddenly after 38 years, with all bones rattling, stands up, picks up his mat, and begins to walk. That's a step up. That's doing something he's not done before. But it called for action. Not just, oh, nice words, Jesus, thanks very much. I'll see you at the same time tomorrow if you're walking by, we'll have another conversation. There was action that was involved in the words that Jesus spoke to the paralyzed man. And I believe that God is speaking to us as a church to step up into everything that God has for us, but that requires some action. That requires putting some legs on some of the words that Jesus speaks. And if Jesus has called us to step up into that, that means that we're going to have to step up in prayer. We're going to have to step up in Bible study. We're going to have to step up in every area of our lives. Because listen, we don't know when Jesus is coming back. But the Bible says that there will be wars and rumors of wars. And I don't need to tell you what just happened a few days ago. We don't know when, what's going to happen. We've just come out of a pandemic and still coming out of it. And then World War III possibly could have started. 
We don't know what's going on, but we've sang this morning, I don't know, but Jesus is still on the throne and my God is still in control. Amen. And there's still power in the blood of Jesus and there's still power in the church as the church would stand up, get away from its paralyzed on spiritual legs and stand up and walk in the authority that God has given her. Yes. To Chronicles 15, that's your introduction. Gosh, look at the time. It's all right. It's Football will kick off the fourth of the <laughs> To Chronicles 15. This is what I want to pull out this morning. But let me give you some context of what's going on here. There's a guy in 2 Chronicles 15 called Asa. Asa. I don't know if you come across a little dude called Asa. And he's a very interesting character. But I want to give you some background so we begin to understand. Keep your finger in 2 Chronicles 15. Flip back into 1 Kings to give you an idea of what's happening before Asa becomes king and becomes ruler of what's going on around him, okay? Because he's had to deal with some stuff that is completely wrong and contrary to the word of God. There was some action that was needed in some of the words that God instructed him to do. Here we go. In uh, 1 Kings um, 14, okay, they're on the screen for you there. In 1 Kings 14, 21, it says, uh, Rehoboam, son of Solomon, was king in Judah. He was 41 years old when he became king, and he reigned 70 years in Jerusalem, the city of the Lord had chosen out of all the tribes of Israel in which to put his name. His mother's name was, and she was an Amorite. Judah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. I don't know about you, but when I read verses like that, that saddens my heart. I wonder if God was to write about nations right now, what would he say? What would he say about England? England did right or wrong in the eyes of God. But Judah did evil in the eyes of the Lord. By the sins they committed, they stirred up his jealous anger more than their fathers had done. They also set up for themselves high praises, sacred stones and asherah poles on every high hill and under the spreading tree. There even had male shrine prostitutes in the land and people engaged in all detestable practices of the nations of the Lord, uh, of, of the nations of the Lord had driven out before the Israelites. My God. Strong words. I don't need to go into the details of what I've just read, but it's in a mess. It is so far from the word of God. Male prostitutes in shrines. I mean, it's, it's, it's unthinkable to think of all this stuff. This, this is what's going on in, in, in 1 Kings. And let's look at, flip over into chapter 15 and verse 3. And it says, And he committed all the sins his fathers had done before him, and his heart was not fully devoted to the Lord his God as the heart of David his forefather had been. You see, the whole issue of our world is hearts are wrong. The greatest commandment of all is love the Lord your God with all your If you're not loving the Lord your God with all your heart, you're loving something or somebody else with that. There's a, there's a heart issue. In the center of our universe, there's a heart issue in our world and the hearts that are divided and away from God are the hearts and the nations that are the ones that are in trouble. The ones that are in difficulty. The people that you and I know, our family, our friends, our workmates, whose heart are not devoted to God, they're far away from God. They're far away from God. And here the undevoted heart here refers to one who is an idolater. Strong, that their hearts are not devoted to God. Church, above everything else, guard your heart. It's the wellspring of life. We've looked at this, the overflow of your, the mouth speaks. So words are coming out here that aren't right. It's not because your tongue is wrong, it's because your heart is not right. It's the overflow of the heart that the mouth begins to speak. And here we're understanding in 1 Kings 15 that their heart was not right. But if we flip over here.
here into 2 Chronicles 15. That's just some background. But at the top of verse 1, you've got Asher's reform. You've, you've got something here that was going to change. Something here that was, that was going to happen, that was going to go on. Go back into chapter 14 as we just look at one more verse that's going to help us. Asa did what was good and right in the eyes of the Lord his God. There's a change. There's a spiritual change coming on because where you fix your eyes determines on how or who you worship. So when I go back to what I said earlier about you know, our ability to receive is our openness to where it is. If your eyes are wandering around the place during a time of worship, how on earth are you going to give him all the praise and all the glory? The trouble is, church, distractions are all around us. Yeah. Even at our prayer meeting this morning, the presence of God was so lovely. You, you're very blessed that we came from the prayer room in here. That's right. We could have stayed in there. <laughs> but there was distractions going on. There was rattling of spoons. There was a mobile phone going off. There was things that were going on. And the distractions we have to learn to lay aside to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Amen. Do you remember a few weeks ago, we sat Thomas up here and he had his Bible out distract them from reading the word of God. It's so easy to get distracted, but we have to keep our eyes fixed on Jesus. Chapter 15 and verse 17 and it says this, although he did not remove the high places from Israel, Asa's heart was fully committed to the Lord all his life. Two extremes that's going on from 1 Kings 14 and 15 now into 2 Chronicles 14 and 15. And we begin to understand what's going on. So let's get down to this. So we look at this in, in 2 Chronicles 15. We could probably not have time to read all the verses of scripture. But there's some stuff that's going on. Um, let's look very quick. Spirit of the Lord came upon him. Uh, he went out to meet Asa and said to him, Listen to me, Asa, and all of Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you when you are with him. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Do I need to say that again? The Lord is with you when you are with Him. The trouble is we step out of our relationship with God. Sometimes we step out of the will of God and we wonder where God's gone. God's not moved. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. Sometimes we move the goalposts. Sometimes we move out of the will of God and we move into stuff or we make decisions that's not godly decisions and then we wonder why God, why aren't you blessing me anymore? <laughs> The Lord is with you and you are with him. If you seek him, you will be found by you will be found by you. But if you forsake him, gosh, he will forsake you. For a long time Israel was without the true God, without a priest to teach him without the law. But in the distress they turned to the Lord, the God of Israel, and sought him. And he was found by them in the days. It was not safe to travel around, for in the inheritance of the land there was great turmoil. One nation was being crushed by another, and one city by another. Interesting. Because God was troubling them with every kind of distress. But as for you, be strong and do not give up, for the Lord will reward your, uh, your, your work will be rewarded. And Asa heard the words of the prophecy, the prophet, and he took courage. And that's the verse of scripture that I want to highlight this morning. When he heard a prophetic word, when he heard the voice of God coming through a prophet at that time, he took courage. He took courage. And so as we begin to look at this this morning, he took courage. Courage means this. Courage is linked with strength, focused on strength. Courage has to be a positive attitude, outlook with a bold action. Just like it happened in John 5 with the guy who was paralyzed for 38 years. There was a bold action that was involved. I wonder if he started to try and get up and it just fell. I wonder how many times he had tried over the years to try and stand. But you and I know that if you don't use your legs for a period of time, then the muscles start getting less and less. It becomes more difficult. So not only will the bones all join together, but suddenly there's strength in the limbs and in the joints and in the muscles, all because Jesus said, get up and walk. And the action from the word of God meant that this man now lived in a miracle. Yeah. 
But here we have courage that's focused with strength. Courage is a positive outlook with bold action. You see, revival and re reform take place when the heart is right, when your eyes are on Him, and you take courage from the Word of God and step up in faith. I want to see revival. I want to see revival. Amen. Does anybody else want to see it? Yes. But we have a part to play. Yes. The church has a part to play. Hearts are right. Eyes are fixed on Him. Working with the words of faith that God gives us and whatever God says we do, even though we've not done it before. Even though you might have to get out of the boat when the storm's still going. Even though you might have to pray for somebody you've not prayed with before. Even though you might have to share your testimony or the word of God like you've never done before. You and I have a part to play on what's going on. So that verse 2, the Lord is with you. He's with you while you are with Him. If you seek Him, you will be found by Him. But if you forsake Him, He will forsake you. It's really, really clear. Who's on the Lord's side? It's the best side. He always wins. He never loses. Just ask Isaiah when he says the tree of the road fills the temple. He's never lost a battle or a fight or even an argument. He's never lost any of those. But church, as we begin to understand this, there has to be a time of abiding. There has to be a time of seeking. We have to abide with him. John 15 helps us with this. You have to be attached to the life source, which is Jesus himself. And if you're not attached for a few days, then what happens? It just begins, the branch just begins to dry up a little bit. You have to constantly be abiding and pulling from the source of life. There has to be a constant seeking of Him. In Deuteronomy 4.29, it says, You will find Him if you seek Him with all your heart and with all your soul. In Jeremiah 29.11, it says, You will seek Me and find Me when you search with all your heart. And in Matthew 7, 7, we know this, seek and you will find. If you seek him, you will always find him. He doesn't play hide and seek with us, church. He will not hide in a place where you cannot find him. He will be right there. In fact, he's right there now. He's just asking, you know, do you want me? Do you want to come deeper? Do you want to step up into everything that I've got to you? Do you want some more charis moments in your life? It's already there. He's just looking for the church to step up. He's looking for the people of God to step up. He's looking for us to step into everything that he's got for us. But here in 2 Chronicles 15, 8. I don't know where I am. In 2 Chronicles 15, 8. He says, he took courage. He took courage because of the word that was given. He grew bolder than he had been before. That's what happens when God speaks to you. You get this boldness that you've not had before. You just realize that you're carrying the words and the power and the presence of God. His victory would inspire new, deg new degrees of, of resolution. I, I wonder... I wonder was Asa ever afraid? I wonder when God was calling him, but what we read in, in 1 Kings 14 and 15 about everything that's going on in the shrines and the, and the, and the false poles and, the, and everything that's going on and, and they're worshiping false gods. I wonder when God spoke to him and said, you know, Asa, part of your responsibility now is to tear all those things down. I wonder if he was afraid. Would you be? Remember, truth, you're a Christian, you can tell the truth. There might be a certain amount of fear that would come across, there might be a little bit of thoughts that's going on, but here he took courage because God speaks something because he's going to see it happen. But it took action. Asa could have heard the words and decided, that's really nice God, who will I send? But God spoke to Asa, it's your responsibility, go and do something about it. And I wonder, did it go through his mind? Well, if I start doing this, how are the people going to respond? Are they going to be with me? Because they've had a long time of being without God. They've had a long time pleasing themselves. That means there's going to have to be a change in that nation. 
It's going to have to be a change in the mindset. It's going to have to change in action. Everything's going to have to change. Life will not be like it was before. Your life's not the same, I pray, like it was before you were a Christian. Please say yes. yes. <laughs> Lifestyles were going to change. But listen, church, sometimes fear can lead us to inaction. When we're afraid of something and doing something we've not done before, it can cause us to step back rather than step up. It can cause us not to do those things, but well, what if they say something? Well, what if it doesn't work? What if it does work? What if God speaks something for a specific reason? Well, God's told me to pray for that person. What if I pray for them and don't get healed? Is that your job to heal them? Or is it your job to pray for them? We just got to step up into everything that God has got for us. We worry so, time, so much about protecting ourselves and we fail to understand the simplicity of just stepping up into what God's got for us. We just miss it so much. Oh God. He took courage. He took courage. Now he's going to have to break down idolatry that's in the nation. He's going to have to come against the unseen spiritual forces that's going on. You know the spiritual wickedness in high places? Yeah. Yeah. All that stuff is going on here. Yeah. Uh -huh. What's going on in 1 Kings 14 and 15? All the stuff that's going on. All the things that God said to him. Okay, Asa, it's your turn now. Take courage of what I'm saying. Go deal with all that stuff. <laughs> okay, you're a little bit more scared now? Yeah. Dealing with the spiritual realms of stuff? Because this thing doesn't just set itself up by itself. The spiritual stuff that's working here. A man's played a massive part. Years, history and years of idolatry, compromise that's going on. And yet God has told him to tear down the idols. And what he was doing in tearing down the idols, that would spread throughout the land. See, if something breaks out here, that has to affect out there. Come on. If something happens in here to you, that has to affect the people that's around. Yeah. Yeah. When we prayed at the end of the prayer meeting this morning, the presence of God was so beautiful, I said, we now have a responsibility to carry what God was doing in, air, in there out to here to affect the people that sit around us. In one sense, you're not responsible for the person beside you. Because you're responsible for your walk before God, you're responsible to pray daily, all that sort of stuff. But when we come into the presence of God, we sign it this morning, we want the overflow. In one sense, if you're not getting the overflow, you're not blessing the person beside you. That's right. Yeah. Yes. If you just get filled to the top, you're okay, Jack. But you're not called to be filled to the top. Thank you, Lord. Top fillers? I don't know. What can you call them? You're called to be overflowers. Overcomers, yeah. over enthusiastic, yeah. over givers. Yeah. Oh, I don't know any more overs. <laughs> but there's a call to the church. But Asa stepped up and tore down the idols. Asa stepped up and rebuilt the altar of God. He didn't just tear down, he built up. And God deals with some stuff in our lives to get rid so he can do some rebuilding. He takes some stuff up up here in order he can renew. Here's the RE words again kicking in. All the stuff that God wants to do, there's a plan and a purpose behind what he wants to do. Church, we've just got to hear what he says. And we've just got to walk the way he's doing it. We step up to what he's saying. And you know what? Change will happen. Has to. Has to. That's the person we're getting to now. Here's the result of stepping out. All Judah rejoiced. Hang on a second. One Kings, all Judah, what were they doing before? Evil in the eyes of the Lord. Now all Judah rejoices. Why? Because one man stepped up. One man had the courage to step up with the words that God was given through the prophet to follow the words spoken by God, one man steps up. All Judah rejoiced about the oath because they had sworn in wholeheartedly. They sought God eagerly 
and he was found by them. We read earlier, you know, if you seek God, you will find him. This verse is just, it's just helping us with this. So the Lord gave them rest on every side. Wow. Let me wrap this up. Are there some things in your life that need tearing down? Are there some things, that's a bottle of water. Are there some things, are there some things in your life that you have built in? Now let me understand what I'm trying to say here. I'm not talking about the things that are, are not wrong, some things we've got to build into our lives to help us, but some things that you've allowed to be built into your life that are ungodly, some things that are allowed to be built into your life that may take you away from God, that may prevent you from reading His Word or spending some time in His presence. Is there some things you need to step out of in order to step up? Are there some things in our lives like that? Are there some things like that you need to say to God, will you please tear these things down in my life because these things need tearing down before you go to the next level of God? Do you understand what I mean? There's some things. It's time for God and it's time for us, church, to let God rebuild. Just to rebuild in our lives. Allowing Him to rebuild back in our lives again. Here's the thing. Do you have the courage that through the Spirit of God allows you to speak out against evil? And do you have the courage to allow the Spirit of God the freedom to do what He wants to do with your life? Now, we know the correct answer to that is yes. But allowing the action to happen is something different. True? Yeah. Come well, on, let's just bow our heads, close your eyes. Just gonna take a moment to pray. I know I've rushed through this a little bit this morning because I do want to spend, you know, a little bit of time um, praying concerning uh, Russia and Ukraine. But here in my heart this morning, church, are you ready to step up? But in order to step up, it's going to take some action. It's going to take something for you to do. Yes. But the step up also might mean there's something you've got to step down from or allow God to remove or some stuff for you that you need to shift aside in your life in order to do it. And listen, between the 1 Kings 14 and 15 and Asa in, in, in 2 Chronicles 15, don't think I just happened in a matter of hours. That would have taken time to tear that down. Yeah. That would have taken time to rebuild again the altar of God. But while every head is bowed and every eye is closed, if you're saying, God, this morning, I want to step up into everything that you've got for me. I want to have the courage this morning, God, to say, yes, do that, do that, do that. But why do you say that? You're giving God permission to deal with anything that would prevent you stepping up. If that's you this morning, why don't you just place your hand over your heart. Let's take a moment to pray. We need the courage to allow the Spirit of God to do whatever He wants to do in our lives. We have to allow Him. We've got to give Him permission. This is where it comes back, church, to loving God with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. He's in charge. He's God, He's sovereign, He's ruler, He reigns. And so Father, right throughout this room this morning and people who've been watching online, God, Lord, as we put our hands on our hearts this morning, Father, we're giving you permission, Lord, to help us step up into the next realm that you've got for us, whatever that may look like. But Father, we do know that some of that might mean us surrendering some areas of our lives that may be stepping away from some ungodly things that may be God, there's some things you've got to tear down in order to rebuild. But Father, our lives again would be built into a place of total surrender before you. For some of us, God, that's their, their action words all over this, God, that we, but we know and we've heard for many years, God, we've got to spend more time in the prayer room. We've got to spend more time in your word. Lord, that's, those things go without saying, but sometimes they've got to be said. And so, Father, we thank you for characters like Asa who will just do whatever you call them to do, Lord, even that the spiritual forces were removed 
because of the courage of one man through the word of God. And so, Father, seal this word in our hearts, in our lives, that we will step up into everything which God has for us. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. 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 Joe, we're just going to bring this to a close. Um, if you can just um, stop the video. Sorry, guys. We're going to just spend some time in prayer now. Um, but God bless you. Thank you for listening. Um,